good Josh your boy Ross back at again with another video so hopefully if you're here you've seen Godzilla versus Kong so this is about to be spoiler filled so if you don't want to be spoiled go check out my other video on just I give my own little generalized review of the movie no spoilers there go check out the other video if you want to i literally just finished recording this song i'm trying to get this content out to you guys but this is strictly for spoiler talk so let's get right into it man i must say seeing this on the big screen was fantastic um can we can we give a round of applause for the the real villain of the movie mega godzilla when i say mega godzilla was probably in my opinion in my personal opinion a better villain than king Ghidorah. and here's the reason why i like how they sit they frame it they frame it as if godzilla has gone rogue and he's just attacking attacking you know attacking people you know attacking coastal cities but there's a reason why he's going rogue because he can sense something's happening and you know they're they're using some type of technology some type of radiation he can sense something's up so he's trying to you know kind of stop it when they finally end up getting mecha godzilla to work oh my goodness bro i i mean King Ghidorah was giving Godzilla the work in the last movie, but in this movie particular, Godzilla was getting toe up from the flow up, but I'm going to get into that. I just had to make that, that really, I had to let that be known at the beginning of the video. Mega Godzilla, hands down, one of the best villains we've had for the monster universe so far out of all, out of all the movies so far, easily one of the best. All right, so let's kind of break it down. Like I said, I'm going to kind of go, you know, somewhat in order and just in recollection of my memory. But um, at the beginning, of course, Godzilla, not Godzilla, King Kong, he's like on this island, on his, you know, on his island, but it's like covered in a dome. Like basically it's like a virtual dome and they only have him in there because Skull Island is pretty much, you know, he can't live there anymore due to the storm. So he's on this island in this dome. He's trying to get out. They have him in this dome because as soon as he leaves or as soon as he like leaves the sanctuary area, Godzilla is going to seek and find him and basically they're going to have a battle. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of the rivalry that they have. So... And from this timeline, they say that it's been three years since the events with Godzilla and King Ghidorah. So Godzilla's really just been chilling. Like, you know what I'm saying? He, he hadn't really been doing too much, just, you know, maxing and relaxing. And King Kong's like, yo, bro, I, I need to get up out of here. I'm a, I'm a prisoner, bro. I, I need to be free. So ultimately, you know, they there's a group. There's a, I want to say there's like a faction. Uh, they're not monarch anymore. Um, it's like a faction that they basically want to find a way to combat Godzilla. You know what I'm saying? Even though for those three years he hasn't been doing nothing, they still, you know, it's like, hey, man, in case he just decides to go rogue one day, we have to create something to defend ourselves. Hence, this is where Mecha Godzilla kind of gets involved. And they end up, uh, Godzilla ends up attacking this, like, little, like, scientific base because he you know he senses something he you know he can feel some type of power source that he's trying to get to so he's gonna do whatever it takes even if it means kill the humans there he's like hey i'm look, bro y'all doing something y'all messing with something y'all shouldn't be messing with let me go handle business all right cool so at this point uh they they reach out to some type of he's like a i guess you could say he's like a uh um a theorist a wild theorist you know we have those theories that people believe in like the flat earth and all these you know kind of crazy things that's happening or that you know they believe is happened with the earth or is happening to the earth he's one of those individuals where he believes there's a hollow earth which there are people that believe in that surprisingly he believes there's a hollow earth where all the monsters are originally from 
so we can and I'm, the the scientific team is basically trying to get to that hollow earth because if they can get to that hollow earth they can get some type of some type of intense radiation some type of material where they're able to basically fuel up mega godzilla to maximum power because obviously godzilla can use the atomic breath at will and their mega godzilla is not as strong as 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 the real godzilla so they assemble a team and they feel like the only person you know the only way you can get there is basically by following one of these giant animals because naturally they're going to go there so if you guys um there's you know if you guys remember what i was talking about in my my non-spoiler review there's a little girl she can speak to uh king kong and that's how they use her to get king kong to kind of do what they need them to do you know what i'm saying basically that's what it is like hey can you tell him to do this and calm down and blah 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 and you know what i'm saying tell him you know it'll it'll be worth it'll be worth his troubles in the end basically she's the middleman between the situation between you know what they're trying to get done so i want to say the first action set piece is that godzilla chained up on the ship when i not get chained, uh, godzilla uh, king kong chained up on the ship when i say it, it was just amazing bro godzilla is truly formidable and you see his weight like his scale compared to all these massive ships and he's just destroying these carriers bro he's just destroying them with ease like i don't even know what's the purpose of anyone shooting any type of missiles or guns because it, it doesn't seem like it does any effect and he was only there for one mission and one mission only to make sure he got rid of king kong now in this fight king kong definitely was at a disadvantage because obviously he's on water he does he's not on stable land and godzilla can swim effortlessly you know what i'm saying so i i like this action scene because it, it's right at the beginning of the movie it gets you hyped up for what's really about to come later in the movie and when i say not gonna lie to you king kong was trying his best to you know hold off godzilla um but ultimately godzilla i think he he definitely won round one if it wasn't for a couple of the humans getting involved uh definitely godzilla probably would have died in this very first scene alone bro it's it, it it's fantastic bro like it that's that's how you get people hyped up for the rest of or like a two-hour movie so after that the little action set piece they end up finding a way to get to antarctica that's one of the entrance ways to get to this hollow earth they end up following uh king kong down there and they use this specialized ship where the gravity is different it's inverted so as soon as you get there the gravity switches or whatnot it's it's weird science but you're supposed to buy into it right and mind you this is like literally a couple few years later after the third one and this take well after uh the second godzilla movie and this kind of takes place in our time period so the technology here is a little bit too too far-fetched to believe but like i said you're just here to see these monsters fight so they get to the hollow earth and you know do you see the different creatures and uh the crew and godzilla uh, and king kong end up getting attacked by like these snake flying creatures like they're they're like the head of a snake the body of a snake but they can fly like a bat bruh very and very cool scene just to see that um ultimately you know saying it comes down to the humans being able to actually uh help out uh god's uh king kong king kong ended up getting wrapped in one of these like like wrapped up by one of the snakes and then the humans use like the weapons on one of the ships to oh, temporarily stun the snake and then king kong proceeds to beat the crap out of this creature beats him down starts slamming him left and right pummeling a double double axe handle pummel just just brutal then rips off his head and decides he deserves a little snack so he does he decides to drink the juices from the head of this snake bat or whatever you want to call it very intense very cool scene and the hollow earth whole segment was actually pretty dope i really wish they you know we would have had more time in that little that little realm like it just seemed colorful and and you know very unique you know what i'm saying it, it seemed like an alien world within the world they have built so the you know it, it was dope i think 
if they could have spent maybe an extra 20 more minutes there and instead of going back to the other characters i'm not even really going to get into their names and what they were trying to do because like i said in my spoiler free review you're not there for them they're there to progress the plot that is it so i wish we could have spent more in the hollow earth but that was cool king kong finally gets to like this throne area where basically you know that's where his family used to be that's where his family came from and you see like this huge throne area and then you also see this throne chair and you see this axe like this makeshift axe or whatnot so king kong he assumes his throne there's like these huge giant bat creatures up above so he assumes his throne and then he ends up using like there's like this little placeholder on the ground where he puts the axe in and when he puts the axe in it starts to radiate and that's when one of the scientist's daughter that's in charge of the whole mega godzilla uh project she went on the trip as well and she's basically there only to get the, the to download the information she needs the, uh, the data she needs in order to send it to her father so mecha godzilla can be you know powered up right so this is happening and at the same time mecha godzilla is being you know trained well not trained but it's like in this this little training facility where they grow the the huge like they grow like the uh what you call it like they grow like some of the monsters there you know what i'm saying basically so making godzilla can you know test out his strength and his abilities on these like these uh smaller but large in size monsters or whatnot so and like i said when you first get introduced to it it is dog it looks he looked that he looked menacing and straight up one of the creatures is in the little test facility making godzilla grabs it it's like some type of bat type creature grabs it by its wings and proceeds to hit it with the atomic breath his version of the atomic breath and splits it in half it was insane and at the time the only way it can be operated is someone is like basically they have to mind meld with it they have to it has to be an operator to kind of you know sync up with it and they're using Ghidorah's skull as like this I guess the, basically the computer because Gondora had this type of telepathic communication with all all of its heads so that's how they're using they're using Ghidorah and some tech and they have to have a human to pilot Mega Godzilla right so when that happens Godzilla senses the power level increase senses the power so it come I believe they go to Hong Kong they, they go to Hong Kong and basically well, Godzilla ends up coming to Hong Kong like, yo, what's happening here? What, what we got going on? And as at the same time, King Kong is like placing this little hammer thing in the ground and it lights up, causing this radiation, like kind of the same type of radiation that, you know, type of power level. I don't know what it is technically, but it looks the same way as the atomic breath. So that's basically what is like this ring around this chair around king kong's chair godzilla senses it and is powering up the axe and at this point i this atomic breath is ridiculously op godzilla stands right above it and proceeds to atomic breath all the way to the center of the earth to the hollow earth where king kong is at and you see godzilla just like yo bro like what, what what you doing down there and king kong like bro oh you want me to you want me to come up there i bet so now it they're they're ramping it up it's like okay it's it's about to get intense my that boy godzilla's like hey man say man i'm not really here for you but since you over there doing that bs down there bro bring your ass up here so i can take care of you myself right cool so king kong ain't no bitch he climbs his ass up there the humans end up following uh i believe the daughter the daughter of the the head of director of the um 
of uh, Mega Godzilla ends up dying because they get the information. And then once Godzilla uses an atomic breath, it creates this whole explosion, this whole hole, like the whole little cave area is starting to tear down. The, the giant bats are starting to swoop up individuals. So they get into one of the other ships. And I guess King Kong is in the way, even though they can fly around the ship, fly around King Kong. So they shoot at him. King Kong grabs them. He looks inside to make sure his little friend from the island's not in there. He's like, huh, all right. All right, she's not in there. Boom, crushes them. They're all dead. I'm like, all right, well, okay. Bye, characters that I don't care about. So <laughs> they, uh, the rest of the crew, or the rest of the, the people you somewhat care about, they end up getting on the ship of the last ship. They go up. They follow King Kong. And when I say, honestly, one of this is one of the best action scenes for a monster movie like this oh it was so fantastic let's be let's keep it a stack and a half uh there's a lot of people dead from this fight scene there's no not there's no possible way everyone got evacuated like they're literally destroying hong kong at this point and it was beautiful to see the fights was dope it was just intense king kong was not giving up godzilla started spinning spamming his atomic breath like he playing mortal Kombat, spamming you know distant moves like projectile moves it was it was fun it's it's, it's fun i'm not really gonna go into great great detail just know when when you see this set piece this action piece just know it's gonna be carnage destruction and fun and that's all you care about right so towards the end you know what i'm saying he, you know king kong using this axe real well you know what i'm saying but ultimately godzilla gets the upper hand he you know king kong ends up getting his shoulder dislocated he gets the upper hand godzilla gets the upper hand he's stepping on his chest just like you know what i'm saying and grinding his foot on his chest like yeah i'm the one you know what i'm saying i am the king of this you know what i'm saying like don't ever get it twisted you know he's yelling you know godzilla's yelling at him it, just right in his face and King Kong, there's no no quit in his blood. Yelling right back at him. I thought that was dope. This is a dope visual. But ultimately, King Kong lost. <laughs> he lost the second round for sure towards the end. He was he was doing well at the beginning of the fight, but towards the end, he lost. And that was pretty much it. So he's actually about to die. Yeah, at this point, he's actually in like bad shape so you know it's looking like he's about to die and that's when they they already upload the information from the hollow earth and that's when mega godzilla is at a hundred percent power remember i said they had only been using them at 40 the person that was piloting him saying was basically trying to tell the director hey, i don't know if we should use this right away because we don't know how the side effects will be at like i guess you can say at a hundred percent right director wasn't having that so as soon and i mean as soon as the dude powers it up or whatnot um i want to say things go haywire so after the epic brawl between godzilla and king kong um mega godzilla start powering up he's at 100 percent power the dude that's controlling him ends up getting zapped in the little controller seat because i guess you can say with it with it being able to be at 100 percent or whatnot it's like i guess you can say king king Ghidorah is like uploaded within the system so it doesn't need obviously the person to pilot it can it's literally going on autopilot at this point it's not going to respond to any commands unless they you know shut down the communication link so at this point i guess you can say king Ghidorah is being reincarnated into mega godzilla and when he pops up on the scene he doesn't care like he's using his version of atomic breath just on hong kong even though the city is already in shambles just to put add insult to injury king kong's over there holding his shoulder damn near about to die godzilla like yo this is who is you like I, i've sensed your power you know what i'm saying i'm gonna have to take you out i just took care of him i'm gonna take care of you and like i said beginning of this video bro 
I don't think I've ever seen King uh, Godzilla get his ass whooped. I don't even think he landed any punches, any attacks, because the thing that made Mega Godzilla so dope in this movie is it's like his agility was ridiculous. Ridiculous. I mean, he's using side boosters to dodge the atomic breath. He's using boosters to hit him with like this this mega ass punch, bro. He's using jet jet propulsions to increase the power of his punch. He's literally grabbing Godzilla's head, hitting him on one building, hitting him on another building, hitting him on another building, bro. Mega Godzilla is using UFC style knees, and it's like. He's able to channel like this increased intense power into his punches. So I guess you could say it's like he's using like atomic breath, but like around his fist. So when he's using knees, it's like Godzilla's getting hit with an atomic knee, if that makes any sense. So it's, bro, it was, Godzilla was getting worked. I mean, truly worked. And at the end, before Godzilla was about to die, Mega Godzilla is trying to open his mouth so we can use this version of the atomic breath and kill it, obviously. And this is when the humans get involved, and you know they they do they use one of the ships to basically bring like you know it's like a defibrillator for to jumpstart King Kong's heart because his heart rate was going like it was really really slow, so he was about to die. So they use that to jumpstart his heart. King Kong get back to get in the mix. He sees what's going on. The little girl is like. Godzilla's not your enemy. You need help. And he like, bro, man, fuck him. <laughs> That's basically what he was on. He's like, man, I ain't helping him. He's like, bro, Godzilla needs your help. We need your help. I need your help. He was like, all right, fine. So he pops his shoulder back in place on a building. That shit looks so badass. Pops his shoulder back into place. He, bro, when I say he goes into attack mode, saves Godzilla life. He's, you know what I'm saying, battling for his life as well. And once again, Mega Godzilla was still holding his own against two. So they start tag teaming him. They start grabbing him by one grabbing uh, one of the uh, Mega Godzilla arms and uh, the other one is grabbing one of the other Mega Godzilla arms. And they're tag teaming him. So, it, bro, this was so dope. Me and Dub, we, we get hyped up just like, oh, shit, it's about to go down. And they were still getting that ass handed to him like yo mega godzilla is is in he is op as hell so at this point mega godzilla is using his tail to strike king kong and it's rotating and he has the axe or whatnot and that's when they use like a little combination of godzilla uses the atomic breath to power up the axe at maximum power and then that's when my man king kong goes crazy he starts hacking and slashing start cutting off his arms start cutting off um like cutting off his arms both his arms both of mega godzilla's legs oil is spilling everywhere and then once he finally has him on the ground he cuts off his head and raises up his head and just oil spilling everywhere i'm like that's what I'm talking about in the me while Godzilla is just trying to recover. So I'm thinking that was pretty, pretty, pretty dope. That whole section of action was is worth the price of admission from when Godzilla is fighting King Kong to when Mega Godzilla gets involved. Fantastic, right? So towards the end, Godzilla is looking at king kong king kong looking at godzilla like what's up my shoulder good i got my weapon like what's good we, we about to go again and that's when king kong concedes he drops the axe because godzilla looking at him like what you about to do with the axe he drops the axe godzilla like that's what i thought nigga <laughs> <laughs> basically in my head that's what i thought and then he just walks off into the ocean and he's done so ultimately when it comes down to it godzilla definitely won this battle he he won this battle he definitely did like like i said uh in the movie they said you know god's uh king kong won round two but i count that whole section as all of round two because at the beginning King Kong was actually putting in work on Godzilla, but then Godzilla started getting mad, and he ultimately had God's, had King Kong on his back 
pretty much so i count that all as round two ultimately king kong he didn't he didn't win he didn't win he put up a good fight but he did not win so at the end towards like the very very end of the movie obviously they go back to the uh to the um the hollow earth and i guess you can say king kong is like the the king of the hollow earth he runs he he's the top apex predator top apex monster in the hollow earth and king kong and godzilla is the uh the the king above the hollow earth i guess you can say they living in in harmony but they still don't mess with each other so uh ultimately i enjoyed this this was dope this was entertaining as hell just for the last 30 35 minutes man was so much fun bro definitely 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 if you like the other godzilla movies or you you know you you know they you're okay with the other godzilla movies but you wanted more of godzilla and the monsters being in the movie i think this one will be more enjoyable if you can just get past the human aspect of it i think you guys will enjoy it i enjoyed it uh dub enjoyed it um it was great man it was it was definitely definitely worth the watch man so that's my spoiler talk on on godzilla versus king kong um comment down below let me know where do you think they should take the franchise man they didn't really give no no after credit teaser so where do you guys think they should take the franchise and what monsters should be involved in the next movie if they do make a next movie but i would love your guys feedback and opinion also tell me what was your favorite part of this movie man let me know i want to start a discussion man spoil it away man this is a spoiler video so you can talk about whatever you want to talk about and maybe mention some things that i may have missed because i plan on probably checking it out again this weekend because it was fantastic but i appreciate all the love and support road to 40k appreciate y'all kicking in with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace